everybody. I'm Amy. I'm Sarashi. I'm Alex. And we are representing one of the wicked. Hello everybody, I'm Amy, I'm Sarashi, and I'm Alex, and we are representing One Number Like It. Um, so, uh, as traffic speeds and volume increases, so too does the level of protection desired by pedestrians. During peak times, uh, the road marked, uh, the red uh, stores up to 100 cars creating tons of jams. And as for students at Millican Mills High School, this causes a consistent fear whenever they are faced with having to cross an intersection. For that reason, our community challenges how do we reduce fatalities and provide safe transportation for every pedestrian. So, for our, oh, for our challenge, we have decided to focus on this road in front of Milken Mills as it, as it is the area where the most students are crossing. As our group went on a site tour outside, one major safety issue we found was the lack of crosswalks. We thought it was strange because students use those areas across every day. And the marked in red areas are where we found there aren't any crosswalks. One path students use a lot mostly is missing uh, is crosswalk number one. The reasons are, firstly during lunch, many students take the path marked in red to go to Denison Center where there's a supermarket and also many local Chinese restaurants to eat at. And to add on, there are three bus stops that students use to get home from school, and vice versa. Missing crosswalk number two can be commonly seen um, used in the morning and afternoon as parents drop off and pick up their child. However, it is also um, a path students must cross when they, if they're planning to go to the library or McDonald's or Subway, etc. Well, missing crosswalk number three serves the same purpose as the crosswalk number two. It's further from Milliken. Students use this crosswalk every day for lunch and also for the bus. How might we? Uh, according to a survey we conducted to students, grades 9 to 12, the top three concerns we found were that 37% of students are concerned about personal safety and security, not only at, uh, during peak commuter times, but any time. 18% are concerned about the hazardous conditions such as past surface conditions, and lastly, 16% are concerned about user conflicts. Well, those concerns, this is the solution we came up with. Um, for locations 1, 2, and 3, we propose improved markings followed by yield to pedestrian signs and tactile pavement. Improved markings make crosswalks more visible to drivers in standard parallel lines, especially at a distance. And along with yield to pedestrian signs, um, this increases the visibility to drivers even more. Lastly, as a substitution for an accessible pedestrian signal, we chose to incorporate tactile paving to help people with vision impairments such as blindness and low vision. We also decided to change this existing crosswalk into a razor one. Razor crosswalks reduce the distance that pedestrians and cyclists must cross the street and the amount, the amount of time they must spend in the roadway, but physically extending the sidewalk into the roadway. Raise the crosswalk can also act as a physical barrier, as a speed bump to slow down traffic, lowering the chance, chances of collisions. It can also make bikes and pedestrians more visible to automobiles, improving their ability to notice them and lowering the likelihood of an accident, and also increasing space for bikes and pedestrians, lessen congestion, boost general safety, and make it simpler for persons with mobility issues to move around the region. All things considered, race to crosswalks can be a good way to improve the security of walkers and cyclists near our school, which experiences heavy traffic during peak hours.
Our, uh, over, overall, our goal was to think of an idea that meets our audience's needs, is accessible to a diverse range of ages, is sufficient and innovative. With the additional thousand dollars, we hope we can implement more race crosswalks and traffic signs because we believe this small change can make a big impact in our community. A challenge we faced was um, sticking to one idea as our group had many visions on how we would like to improve Milliken. And how our club overcame this was by um, focusing on our students' wants and needs. And we did this by not only conducting a survey, but we also um, uh, did interviews. So this concludes our pitch. Thank you. So uh, if anyone have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, thank you very much for the thoughtful uh, presentation. I'm wondering, did you do any studies around how most of the students are getting to school? Because you mentioned sort of bikes walking, bus, do you have any sort of idea of like how most students go to school? Uh, most students use cars and bikes, but almost like 40% use bikes during the, with the winter time. That number usually goes down and it's mostly cars. Okay, thank you also for your presentation. Um, you might have mentioned this, I, I might have missed it, but um, did you guys are, are there any uh, traffic signals, like stop signs at any of these intersections or anything like that? I know there might be missing crosswalks, but in your, in your analysis, did you think about um, not just crosswalks, but maybe a stop sign as part of um, a solution? And if so, tell, tell us more about whether you thought about that or not. Um, so, like, uh, I don't know uh, if we can go back, but, like, one of the uh, sections was there was just an always stop, uh, but that didn't really, like, help since, yeah, right there, uh, the, the first red box, the middle red box, there's a always stop that makes it so only one car can, like, go at a time, um, but I don't think that really helped us since, like, cars was just, like, especially during the morning times with peak traffic, everyone's just, like, hustling. They don't really pay attention to that. And then to add on, uh, there's like one accident happened in the morning, so like there's a biker, which is also awesome, came across the roadway and a car just uh, somehow ran a little bit on. Yeah. But luckily that student didn't have like significant damage. Um, yes. Indeed. Okay, thank you. You answered my question. Thank you very much. Thanks for the thorough research. Um, I'm just wondering if your team thought of other insertions beyond the, the painted lines and, and raised crosswalks, things like benches or trees or any type of greenery? Um, our main focus was um, transportation. So another idea we thought about like before we chose um, crosswalks, we also thought about like bike lanes because um, a lot of our students at our school, like um, from the results from a survey, actually bike to school and they live very close to the school. Um, but we decided to um, focus on the crosswalks because we thought um, that these missing three crosswalks were more important than like the bike lanes at the moment. Um, there's also um, there's just a really nice path, which is not, unfortunately not on the map, but it, not a lot of cars use it, and it's near Denison Center. One of, one of our uh, populated sites that students use, and uh, you can easily access the neighborhood on um, on a bike too. So like if we could add like a bike path or like even like a student intersection there would have been a mm -hmm. great yeah. That would uh, definitely be a future consideration. Thank you very much. <laughs>